Oh. Uh, hi, everyone. Oh, that's pretty loud. Uh, my name is John Sanders. I'm the lead producer for Third Party Production. Hi, uh, I'm Nick Sutner. Um, I'm a lead account manager in developer relations. We work at Sony America in third party. Um, also, looks feels like I'm addressing the sun, like the, the morning sun. So can't see any of you. Um, so yeah, we're not. We we usually don't do the talking. So we want this to be more of a conversation. If there's anything you want to yell out, any questions or whatever, as we go, feel free. Uh, it'll probably be mostly Q and A, anyways. We're just sort of going to go through the basics of getting set up for self-publishing on PlayStation. Uh, hopefully, you're aware you can self-publish on PlayStation because for a long time we did a really poor job of telling people that uh, in previous regimes. So um, we really want to be out at events talking to people about it um, and make you aware of the possibilities with us. So we're just going to talk through the process a little bit and um, yeah, again, stop us with any questions along the way. Uh, so what a developer relations team is, which we're sort of both members of, um, is we do a lot of outreach. Uh, we've been sort of trying to go to every event over the last couple of years um, and helping developers. You know, once we talk to someone at an event, we know they want to make a game, we sort of help them beg through the process to get them set up uh, and help publish your games on the PlayStation Store. Uh, and we sort of serve as your champion within Sony. Um, so we talk to the events team and PR and marketing and pretty much everyone to represent your game internally. So if it's something that's cool and we like it and reflects well on the platform, we're going to really go out of our way to give it a lot of support. Um, this was just a shot on the left uh, during our E3 press conference this year uh, of a whole bunch of digital titles that we liked that we just sort of threw a logo up just to show like here's the breadth of content um, coming that we think is pretty varied and interesting. Um, and from the right, I got that tweet from Zach Gage who made Spell Tower um, and Ridiculous Fishing, uh, which I liked a lot, saying the Sony booth at E3 is a total triumph. Being there feels like an amazing indie event. I actually liked being there in E3 first, which I thought was a pretty nice sentiment because E3 can be pretty obnoxious sometimes, um, and these days it's actually got some really nice variety. Um, so I like to think we contributed a little bit to that, uh, so I wanted to call that out. Um, and so self-publishing, you are the publisher with us. You're the developer and the publisher. You know, it's you set the price, you set the release date, uh, you handle the submission process as the publisher, but we can totally help. Uh, we have our release management teams and our PlayStation operations teams and our uh, dev support teams, some of whom are in the room here, uh, to help through that. Um, there's some things like requesting product IDs and network services. Um, you know, a bit of a learning curve for it. It's probably about 20 hours of work total spread out over time. It's not so bad though. Uh, again, we have a lot of people to help, but that's sort of your work as the publisher. And going through QA, you know, the console users still expect a certain non-buggy experience to some extent, so uh, we're gonna help you get through that. Uh, we have a dev kit loaner program, so you shouldn't have to pay for any development hardware. Uh, no cost for licensing, submission, patching. Uh, we're open to a variety of business models. Uh, free to play particularly is doing really well on our platform right now. Uh, it's still pretty young, there's not that many games, but there are free-to-play titles on PS4 and Vita and some on PS3 and they've been doing really well. So that's sort of an interesting space uh, in the console world. I'm also talking really fast. Um, and uh, the biggest part I think we can bring to a lot of smaller studios is co-marketing and PR support for the games. Uh, by, you know, just at the bare minimum, uh, we can announce your game on the PlayStation blog, which gets picked up by a lot of other enthusiast press. Uh, put a trailer on our YouTube channel, which has, a, I don't know, millions of subscribers. And even like a tweet from the PlayStation account, it's like four million followers. So once we start getting things out there across those channels, a lot of people are seeing your games. I feel like my beard is touching my mic. <laughs> or my shirt. Uh, and uh, also potential inclusion in events and other opportunities. So again, we're the ones who sort of help curate things like the booth at E3 or PAX or GDC or uh, Gamescom or Fantastic Arcade coming up or Gamer Camp or just a whole uh, litany of events. Um, and just opportunities. Uh, so like last week, our PR came to us and said, hey, we want to take a bunch of games to the IGN offices and show the latest builds of them, things they may not be aware of, what do we want to show? And we said, oh, cool, this is ready, this is ready, this has a nice build, like this is coming together. So uh, we sort of help fulfill all these requests as they come in. So there's a ton of opportunities to highlight uh, cool games. Um, and a little bit about the actual process. Uh, that's the URL where you start. We also have that printed on a card down in our booth in the hall. You can come and grab. Um, that's basically our developer portal. Uh, the best thing to do actually is let us know after you've applied to it, because there's a ton of people uh, you know, like who've applied and are waiting for us to get to them, but we have a pretty small team going through it. So if we've spoken to you already and can vouch for you, we can help get you through more quickly. So let us know afterwards. Our emails are on the end. Um, so we actually have an NDA we'll send you first, so we can talk more freely with you. And then we have one single new worldwide licensing agreement, which is really nice, because in the past we had several different agreements for each of our territories globally 
differently, but now it's one thing you sign, you're set up for publishing and loaning you hardware and everything you could want to do forever on all of our platforms. So it's like one big nice thing you sign and that's out of the way. Uh, the two requirements really are being a business entity. Uh, it's best that we're dealing with a company, not an individual for your own protection. Um, and a static IP address uh, that we whitelist for security, uh, though you can just buy one online and VPN into it uh, if that's an issue of cost or can't get one through your ISP. Um, so we whitelist that for the dev kits and for access to our DevNet and TPRNet sites that we do, like our backend sites we get you access to. Uh, those little flow charts on the portal, it's slightly out of date because it doesn't have a new agreement on it, but that just gives you some sense of the process. So basically you get you in there, we license you up, then you circle back with, if you've spoken to one of us, like myself or John, um, and then go from there, loan you a dev kit, and yeah, make the game. Uh, so to get into a, like Unity specific support, I'll turn it over to John. Uh, thanks, Nick. So I'm assuming this is why most of you guys are here, to look at Unity. So the, the great thing about Unity is that you build once and deploy. So if you came by our booth, you're going to see a couple games like, like you know, Apes Odyssey and then Race the Sun coming out across all of our platforms. And of course, our friends at Dynamite are going to talk about that right after us. So uh, it's really awesome because at, we're, we're going from 4.3 right now. And uh, you can access Morpheus with a, via a plugin, uh, Vita, and the upcoming PlayStation TV. So PlayStation TV is coming out in October, so, uh, and then November in, in uh, Europe. So it's a great way to reach uh, a really hungry, avid audience. So people on Vita buy a lot of content, digital content. They're really avid consumers, and sometimes they buy as much or more than people on PS3. Now, of course, PS3 with millions of units out there. Uh, uh, PSM, as well, is a great option for those of you who don't have the business requirement in terms of being a, set up as a business or whitelisted uh, you can basically go up and it's a click-through licensing agreement and that's a great way for you to reach Vita and PlayStation TV. And if you have questions, we actually have the, the man responsible sitting in the back, so we'll point him out to you. Wearing a blue shirt. Blue shirt. So hiding you can, in the back. Hiding in the right back. There. So if you have questions on PSM, you can uh, talk with him. So there's other support options. Uh, Third-party production, which I'm a member of. Pretty much we help people who lack resources come to platform. Uh, what we do is we provide direct production oversight, uh, could be as hands-on or hands-off as you need. Uh, examples of some of the things we've done are Towerfall, so pretty much Matt was focused on getting his game out for PC. We helped uh, port him over to PS4, we oversaw the, the dev on his behalf, and helped get him on the console. And also like Borderlands 2, Borderlands so the, 2. to Vita, so the scale yeah. of projects is pretty drastic that they work on. Yeah, and uh, in fact, you know, Grim Fandango is another example, so we work for Indies, and we have actually a slew of, of other titles like Apotheon and Ironclad Tactics and Escape Goat and Nidhogg all coming out. So these are all things that we've partnered with. Uh, we also do uh, localization. I don't know if you have, there's any Hatsune Miku fans out there, but we help with that. So uh, real quick, while we're on that point, actually on localization, to release a game in our different territories, you don't need to localize anything in the game, only the description in the store. Uh, so English, French, Italian, German, Spanish will get you covered for a lot of countries. And then there's some more like Turkish and Russian, where if you add those localizations to the store descriptions, you can publish in more PlayStation stores. Um, but anyway. Yeah, and we partner directly with DevRel. I mean, we're, our boss is actually the same boss now, Gio Corsi, who's head of both 3PP. And, and developer relations, and uh, it basically gets you into the same kind of uh, marketing and, co and PR help that, that they offer. Uh, the other program we, we have is a pub fund program. So basically, this is kind of looking for platform defining content. Uh, it, the way it works is you get a back end guarantee. So when you release, you get, you get the money then. But this is kind of two different ways we go where uh, third parties funding as development goes on for on a milestone basis. You deliver your milestones, or the developer hits those milestones, and that's how funding gets out, or pub fund, which is upon completion. Uh, and and we're, we're pretty picky about what yeah. we choose for pub fund, uh, but we're always happy to, uh, to talk about different pitches, because um, yeah. yeah. That's basically whatever games, so it's sort of like a passion project for us, where whatever games get us excited personally and get our group excited, and there's potential to help give that guarantee. And yeah, I mean, the most important thing is when you hit that portal and you see us, shoot us an email, and if you're able to share your game, it's a great time, because then we can start looking at it, we can start playing it, we get a chance to see where it fits and how we can best help you. So really, don't be shy about sending it. We're, we've seen games in all different states, so if you just have a slice or just an early prototype, it's, it's great to start looking at it, and then we can start seeing what we can do to help you. So this is an example of some of the upcoming Unity-based games. I think there was just a talk on, on Galaxy, so yeah. just before us. Uh, but just an amazing. It's also a pub fund game. Yeah. That's why I put it in the middle. So by pub fund, you get to be in the middle of our slides. <laughs> 
Yeah, Race to Sun, which is uh, getting a lot of play time down in the, in the booth, so. There's a lot more, too, that was, yeah. those are the ones I like most. <laughs> cool, that's what we have, so let's see your questions. Yeah. Hear your questions. Are there any questions? Great, we've spoken to all of you already <laughs> over the last two days. We'll be around tomorrow as well. Um, and this evening, mostly. So, hello. Yeah. What's the royalty share model? You basically set your wholesale price, and then our store marks it up by 30%, essentially. Um, so if you want to charge 9.99 for your game, you set that at 6.99, and we sell it for 9.99. So it essentially equates to a 70-30 breakdown. I don't know, I don't know exactly the specific legal wording. It's probably done that way for a reason. I don't think we've ever sold anything not that way. I think it's probably in there that way just to be safe, but I don't want to, probably shouldn't comment on like the okay. <laughs> specifics of it. But if you want to drop me an email, I'm happy to like get you an informed answer from someone who's not me. <laughs> but that's always how it works, essentially. Any uh, engineering or other questions? We have our. You know, members from Dev Support and R and D here. We're not technical, but they are very technical. Okay. Got Morpheus represented, represented, first party, middleware. What's the level of QA support provide for uh, any development? Well, we basically can help with uh, waiving like a TRC pre sweep. So basically, you get to go through a sweep, you get your report, so you kind of know what you need to hit. Uh, and if it's a third-party production title, we basically always provide some, some level of QA in that. And it, yeah, it depends on how you're coming through. If you're partnered up with us in one of those programs we mentioned, then we can help get a little more support. Otherwise, QA is typically on you. Um, I mean, when you come into our QA, we ideally want you to pass the first time through and not use our QA as just general QA house, but, um, but we can help you get through that process. And once you get licensed and you get access to DevNet, that's when you can go read up on all the TRCs and such to get a sense of, you know, just like in this presentation, you got to put the R after the PlayStation and make it all kosher, so. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, what are you guys were talking about a little bit of exposure, like the blog and all that stuff. Everybody who finally gets through the process is very important. Get that level of exposure. Or exposure in terms of, like, being on the blog? Yeah, well, being in the blog and whatever other channels you guys Yeah, so by default, I'd say announcing, a, like, because the blog is, you know, they're like a news outlet, right, for other press as well and for consumers. So they want to announce all games coming to our platform. So bare minimum, you could do a blog post, and we would work with you to make sure you do it on a, a day that doesn't have too many other posts going up, um, which is also similar to how we'd work with you in releasing your game. And uh, those social media channels, that's fairly typical for all games. But then, again, if, you know, uh, just if we like the game or a lot, or if we're partnered up in some other capacity, or if the opportunity presents itself, or if it's highlighting a platform feature in some way, there's lots of other reasons why we would elevate it and maybe show it in an event or other things. But bare minimum, um, you would definitely get out there across our channels, uh, both at the announcement and up through to launch. And then the second part, sorry. Yeah. Sure. How do you guys, how, what is, can you draw a comparison, like, is being featured in the PlayStation Network store? Sure, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I guess one big difference is we don't have hundreds of thousands of games. We have, you know, hundreds to start with at least. Um, and that's about, you know, like I said in the beginning, you're the publisher, you choose the release date, but we want to work with you on that. Uh, so like right now, for instance, we are recommending to a lot of our developers, if you're not coming out sort of by mid-October-ish, maybe you want to hold off till January, because it's a really busy time, both on our network and just general, like, you know, the AAA games are coming out. That's sort of what has the mind share. So we can give guidance and even down, like, granularly, like, oh, maybe this week is better than this week. So we want to work with you on that because we know if you're releasing on a less busy week, you're going to get better store placement. And we work with our store team as well. Um, again, if there's a certain like formal partnership that we, of course, have a little more leverage to like lock things in. But uh, we want to work with every game, though. We don't want you to release a game and have no banners up day one, right? That's not ideal for anyone. So um, it hasn't been a problem so far. I think we've managed to get pretty good support for most titles. Um, and if we can't do it 
you know, on launch week, we'll bump it up the next week. Um, so it's just about working with you and having that dialogue. Chris, <laughs> maybe. Were you in the last session? Someone asked that exact same question. Um, we actually don't provide the servers like some other companies for multiplayer. So when you do a multiplayer game or whatever, you have to use outside servers. And I can put the servers wherever I want. Like Pretty much wherever you want. And if you're interested in doing actual cross-platform play, just come talk to us, sort of a case-by-case -case basis. Yeah. I think to repeat what Alex is saying for the room too, you like it. If you have a game where you're running around and seeing all sorts of other users, you would use PlayStation IDs to identify them. You wouldn't be bringing in like friends lists from other platforms. That's sort of what you were saying, right? Okay. Uh, first there. So Vance. Let me back to you. DAU? Oh my, I don't know that acronym, sorry. Uh, jelly active users, like active on the store? Active using the game. Oh, active, the game. Uh, honestly, that's not, it's not something that I'm familiar with, really. I don't think it's something we like, sort of, I mean, maybe we track it in some way, yeah. but it's not something that we're really privy to. We see sort of store stuff, and we see play, you know, sales and such, but not the active users. Um, that's toughest thing to talk about is sales. Uh, I'd say maybe if you know other developers who've released content, um, maybe talk to them. Uh, not that they're really supposed to tell you either, but uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah. but I mean, I'd say talking to most people, they've had a positive experience on the platform. They were working on the next game with us. Um, so, so far, especially on PS4, we found people yeah. having really positive experiences. And like John said, too, on Vita, I mean, those are sort of the platforms I think we're sort of most focused on right now. Um, PS3 obviously still has a huge amount of people using it, but there's a ton of content on the store. Um, it's maybe a little bit harder to stand out, but um, Vita users, too, spend a ton of money and buy a lot of games. Uh, so, you know, games that are releasing, especially if you're releasing cross-platform, uh, you can do really well. Uh, and for instance, like Rogue Legacy just came out on all three platforms and had cross buys. So that's a ton of value perception when you're saying you buy it once you get you know, three versions of the game. Even if you don't own those platforms yet, you have an entitlement if you get it in the future. Um, but uh, yeah, so far I think we've had pretty positive experiences um, in terms of sales. And I guess the active users thing, yeah, I'm not It depends on the type familiar. of game. I mean, yeah. it's, but the free-to-play space has been doing exceptionally well on PS4. I, mean, I, think, I, I think there's probably a mechanism for that. In, like, in Warframe, you can probably go see how many people are playing, yeah. I think. In yeah. Destiny, I believe. And, yeah. You have a question? Yeah, um, the initial uh, submission of the game there, what's the best format or way for us to deliver to you that you're looking for? Sure, uh, you mean just for us to check out the game? Yeah. Yeah, just uh, email us, I mean, a link to a build or Dropbox it or something or a design doc or whatever you want to share. Yeah. yeah, I mean, if you're not yet licensed, I mean, we can look at a PC or whatever. Yeah, so, that's yeah. fine, yeah. yeah. We don't mind playing games with other controllers, too. That's fine. <laughs> we may have them in the office. Um, that's probably something best to come talk to us about after your license and set up. I mean, it is it is an option. Uh, you know, sometimes we talk to developers like, hey, we think your game would be a great fit for Plus. Let's figure that out. Uh, or if a game's been out for a while, they come to us. Hey, I'd love to do, um, you know, get my game in PlayStation Plus. How does that work? And so, it, it, again, it just comes back to more of a dialogue sort of case by case. But uh, those are details best spoken about once you're in the system with us. Anyone else? Cool. We'll cool. stick around for the Counter Spy Dynamite talk. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks.